Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we are doing a Rob Pat Cricket Heritage Bat sent in by David in Tasmania straight after this. So thank you very much to David, long time viewer and patron of the channel. He supplied many bats that you would have uh, seen reviewed including that amazing custom legend that I did last month. If you haven't seen that, I do recommend you go and have a look at that one. This is his Rob Pat Cricket. He actually did have a Rob Pat bat before, a custom. Um, I'll leave the link in the description. And I really liked that bat. I really liked the shape. So much so that I actually bought my own Rob Pat. So full disclosure, I do actually use a Rob Pat bat. There's a review on it. A link to that also in the description. So this is his Rob Pat Cricket. He's just purchased this. It's gone to Tasmania, then come to me. It doesn't appear to have been knocked, but Rob normally puts it through his standard process of oiling it and giving it a final extra press, but it hasn't got the face sheet on it. So I'm just wondering what state this is in. You can see with the Heritage Bats come with a beautiful cover. That is really good quality, even though it's got some dust in it. This is a Heritage LE. He's just put RPC LE, but I'm going to say it's a heritage. And we've got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven grains, bit of heartwood down the right hander's outside edge. Marbling here, which is actually outside the playing area, uh, probably a bit high. I've got a little pin knot coming through here and a little bit of something there. But in general, the grains are fairly nice. A little bit uneven going out towards the sides, but I like to see a nice a consistent grain pattern through the center of the bat where you're going to be hitting it at least and that does have that uh, they're nice and straight uh, up at the shoulders i can see that the willow it is sort of straight going through the sides there there's a tiny little bit of wobble within the actual grain but it's actually pretty straight uh, at either end it's got some sort of stampings there there's an i and a i e h which i have no idea what that means you can see the shape there. You'd probably call that a mid profile with a lot of uh, emphasis on this area of the bat here. So more of a, a driver's bat. And David, I do know, has been working really hard down in the nets in Hobart uh, to improve his game. He tells me he's no longer slogging across the line, so he's got one up on me. Well, just putting it up there, you can see it's fairly full. Like all Rob Pat bats, there's a tiny little bit of concaving just to evenly distribute the weight and improve the pickup of the bat. Toe shape isn't too thin. There's a bit of width down here uh, at the edge of the toe, and there's some width up here. But you can see the wood has been taken primarily out of this sort of area here and condensed down into here with a much longer playing area. As far as bow goes, like many of the bats, there's a nice bow there that Rob presses in. And it's got pretty much slightly rounded face, but we'll have a look at that when we put it through the gauge. Stickers themselves are not embossed. And there is a sticker put over the top here, which is Heritage. So these are the ones that you would get if you bought an RPC. These are the custom bats. And you've got here the same sort of treatment. An additional sticker that I have never seen before on a Rob Pat bat is that one there, which I'll hopefully get that in there for you, Borton Willow. Um, and I've never seen a bat maker say who the actual Willow merchant is, so good on Rob for actually doing that, because without the merchants there are no bats. Now you can see here we've got a yellow tinge to the bat. That's because Rob has a special brew which he puts on them. Uh, to seal the bat, which is obviously part linseed oil, hence the colour. But even though it's been transported over, I can't see any dents or anything uh, of that nature. So he lets them actually uh, cure before they actually go out to the customer. And what have I got here from David as far as why he bought the bat? Where did he hear about the seller? He heard about it on YouTube. Any feedback? Absolute pleasure to deal with quality products. Was the bat shipped by the seller with adequate protection to prevent damage in transit? Yes. Uh, considerations, always going to get a bat made by Rob. Did he ask for any custom features on the bat? He said yes, custom made Aussie conditions, 210 was requested. So we'll have a look at that. Is the bat going to be sold after the review? No. Basic information about David as a cricketer. And he's put here, hopeless but trying to improve LOL. And I think he's selling himself pretty short there because I know he does much more training than I've done. So there you go. That's a bit about David and why he purchased the bat. 
let's put it through the gauge and have a look. And firstly, we can see here on the face, holding it that way, it's not a perfectly flat face. Uh, you'd say that's a semi-round, uh, flat in the middle, but rounded out towards the edges. So you're going to get a little bit of deflection out there rather than cracking. You can see how well those edges have actually been boned by the bat maker. So that saves you a bit of work when you're actually prepping the bat. On this side, putting that over its highest point, you can see we're probably sacrificing maybe four mil there. And there is some concaving there, pulling that down. You can see probably a couple of mil. And that's just throughout the, the shape, just to balance it. Remember Rob Pack was the master bat maker for Puma in the UK and he used to make for all the players. And I'd imagine some of them keep coming back to him. All right, let's do the dimensions and I'll turn this this way. And we will start. I need to get myself a much better setup for this. Starting up here at the shoulder. 14.9, center of the splice. 37.2, so there's still a lot of wood left there. Top of the edge, remembering there is rounding there. And it is 40.3. Down here at the toe, 22.8. And in the center of the toe, 26.6. If anybody knows where I can get a really decent set of clamps with long nose that I could just put over the whole thing. Just let me know. I'd rather have just a much longer tooth on that so that I can go all the way over and tell you exactly what it is rather than having to measure it this way. It's an approximation. Well, 62. So let's have a look at the uh, width of the bat. 107.8 is the four and a quarter inches. So I'll put this on inches. And it's actually over. Have a look at that, 109.8, let's try that again, 109.5. So it's actually wider than it needs to be, but the gauge is actually 110. So if you put it, if you're in a game and they said, oh, we've got to test it, you'd get away with it. It's because this is actually the legal width of what the bat's supposed to be. As long as it can fit through here, it's legal. Now the handle shape, it's a beautiful thick oval shape down the bottom here at my bottom hand and semi oval at the top. I really like the feel of that. Uh, no need to add an extra grip. And we'll have a look under the handle. You can see three cork and nice binding, uh, good quality all through there with the custom specifications. And he takes that extra bit of time to present nicely by putting the white tape on first and then covering with the black tape just to give you that nice look there. What does it actually feel like? It feels like a 2.9. I'm not going to say it feels like a 2.10, but I'm not going to say it feels like a 2.8 either. It feels like a 2.9 in my hands uh, and it's got a nice pickup, nice balance. What does it actually weigh? to 10.6 well it doesn't feel anything like that so yeah it's it's a decent pickup for its actual weight he's paid 250 pounds for this plus delivery that's 460 australian dollars what you're getting is what other people would call player grade willow a little bit of marbling up here a tiny bit of speck and a little thing out there but all outside the playing area that's outside the playing area what does it actually tap up like so starting down here at the toe. And it's nice and hard down there at the toe. Coming down into its area where it's pinging better. Going in a mid position. Going up here a bit higher. And even going here on this piece of marbling. So he's got a bat which is going to perform well in Aussie conditions. It's mid and it's got a bit down the mid low and a bit up here as well. And it's nice off center as well. 
So Rob hand presses all his bats and gives it an extra press at the end so that players can actually go out and start using it. He hasn't put any scuff sheet on this, which I guess would be at the request of David. I think with a little bit of extra uh, knocking, this will actually get even better just down here. But, I mean, that's really going pretty nicely. Very nicely. Uh, and I'll just bring in my own bat, just so you can get a comparison of what you can expect once these bats start going. Obviously a completely different profile and a lot rounder on the face. This is what happens when it starts going. It just goes everywhere. And that one has only played about five games. Uh, I'll be using that again this year if I continue to play, and I think that will just get better and better. Thank you very much, David, for supplying another bat for us to see. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. That's it.